This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the 7th GPS-2F satellite for the United States Air Force. The global positioning system provides worldwide positioning, navigation, and timing services for military and civilian users. You're now hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Vector pressure is good, pump speeds within expected parameters. Continuing pitch yaw roll program, body rates look good. Booster performance looks very good. Pitch yaw roll program is complete. Booster engine continues to operate well. Pump speeds within band. Projector pressures as well. Mach 1. You. Body rates look good. Booster has throttled down right on schedule. Signatures look good. Currently flying at 1,700 miles per hour at an altitude of 11 miles. Booster engine continues to operate well. Body rates are stable. Coming up on closed loop steering. And Q Alpha closed loop steering has been enabled. Fighter rates look good. Booster continue to perform well. Pump speeds and ejector pressures are within band. RCS pyro valve has been fired. System is now pressurized to flight levels. Booster engine continues to operate very well. Currently accelerating at 3.4 Gs. Flying at an altitude of 33 miles, downrange distance of 53 miles. Current velocity is 5,243 miles per hour. And Q, Q Alpha Limited steering has completed. And boosters throttled back right on schedule. Engine response looks good. Currently accelerating at 4.6 Gs. Flying at an altitude of 49 miles. Downrange distance 103 miles. Current velocity 7,734 miles per hour. And we've throttled back to maintain 5 Gs. Boost phase cooldown is underway. Pogo pyro valve vent has been fired. and begun throttling to maintain 4.6 Gs in preparation for BECO. Boost phase cooldown is complete. Here we have BECO. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros and stage separation. Looks like a clean set. Locks and fuel pre-start on the RL-10. GN2 purge for any of the RCS is underway. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. And we have indication of payload for jettison. Looks like a clean jet.
This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 4 minutes and 44 seconds. Marty Malinowski just confirmed payload fairing jettison and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is in the first of two center engine burns as the Atlas V travels in a northeasterly direction up the east coast of the United States. Our next event, Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur about 12 and a half minutes from now. I'm now joined by Lieutenant Daniel Cuellar from the Air Force's Global Positioning Systems Directorate. Lieutenant, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Steve. It's an honor to be here for the 7th GPS-2F launch. What is the current status of the GPS-2F program? Well, the GPS-2F program is in the final stages of delivering the remaining GPS-2F satellites. So currently, there are 6 of 12 satellites on orbit, and they are actually meeting mission requirements. So three additional satellites have been accepted by the Air Force and are in storage at the Boeing factory. The delivery of the final satellite will be completed and moved to storage later on this year. So the Space Vehicle 8 is confirmed for an October 29th launch, also here at Cape Canaveral Air Station. Our current plan is to launch the remaining five 2F space vehicles by the end of 2016. What is the current status of the GPS constellation? Well, the GPS constellation remains healthy, stable, and robust, with 31 operational satellites on orbit, providing position, navigation, and timing to users around the globe. Uh, 21 of 31 satellites have remained operational well past their design life, demonstrating the high-quality engineering and mission assurance practices used in the program. Lieutenant, how did you become an officer in the Air Force? Well, I came from a small town in Central California. Uh, I went to school there. I started attending college and decided, you know, maybe it wasn't right for me. So I, uh, I enlisted in the military back in 1998. So after I became a sergeant, uh, it was recommended by my leadership to go ahead and apply for a commissioning program. I got accepted and uh, became electrical engineer and then went to officer training school and became an officer of the United States Air Force. What was your path to your current position? Well, after earning my degree in electrical engineering, the Air Force categorized me as a developmental engineer. And based on that, there are so many places I could have gone. I was fortunate enough to get stationed in El Segundo, California, working in the GPS directorate. And uh, it's been a great fit. Uh, the GPS Directorate focuses on develop development and production of uh, technologies to support both civilian and military GPS users worldwide, both now and in the future. And how does your job help the uh, uh, GPS mission? I work in the GPS User Equipment Division, and we're responsible for the acquisition of u uh, GPS User Equipment for military applications. Uh, our mission is to deliver sustained, reliable GPS capabilities to America's warfighters and our allies around the world. This is done by developing and testing modernized equipment that's operational in any environment. My job is to work integration between military GPS user equipment, or MGUE, and military platforms. We've already begun MGUE integration efforts on the Navy's early Burt class destroyer, the Army's unmanned aerial vehicle, called the Raven, the U.S. Marine Corps and Army's joint like tactical vehicle, and the F-15E Strike Eagle. Lieutenant, why do we need M-Code and MGUE? Well, M-Code's a new, highly encrypted GPS signal uh, that'll be used solely for military purposes. Uh, to access M code, you need an M code receiver, and currently the only M code receivers capable of using M code are MGUE. So these receivers will provide increased resistance to jamming and will allow for the differentiation between authentic and false GPS signals. One of the main objectives of MGUE, though, is providing global positioning, navigation, and timing to our military forces and our allies while denying the use of GPS for our adversaries. Well, Lieutenant Cuellar, I appreciate you taking your time to join us uh, this evening, and we thank you for your service to our country. Thanks, Steve. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 8 minutes 36 seconds into the flight. Excess oxidizer and controlling near nominal mixture issues. Engine performance continues to look good. Chamber pressures, LOX pump discharge, and fuel venturis within expected bands. Centaur has achieved the head-on gate at this point. Currently flying at an altitude of 233 miles, downrange distance 1,220 miles, current velocity 12,985 miles per hour.
and Centaur continues to progress well through the burn. Our all 10 performance looks nominal. Thermal conditioning firings look good. Line temperatures have warmed to bottle temperature. And Centaur is making an, a fuel-rich correction at this point. Engine response is appropriate. Chamber pressures are stable. Some slight pump speed increases due to the change in MR. And Centaur is currently flying at an altitude of 236 miles, downrange distance 1,743 miles, current velocity 14,597 miles per hour. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 12 minutes, 4 seconds into the flight. We're approaching the end of the first of two planned RL-10 Centaur engine burns. The Atlas V and GPS satellite are flying over the North Atlantic Ocean, south of Greenland, and about midway between North America and Europe. Our next event, the first main engine cutoff, or MECO-1, is scheduled to take place about 6 minutes from now. While we wait for the next mission event, let's take a look at a video highlighting the important capabilities of the GPS Block 2F satellite. The Global Positioning System is a marvel of the modern age. It consists of more than 30 GPS satellites circling the globe over 12,000 miles above us. In tightly controlled orbits, these U.S. Air Force satellites continuously transmit their signals to Earth. An extraordinary technology, GPS enables anyone with a GPS receiver to determine their precise location and the exact time anywhere in the world, usually within a meter and within a billionth of a second. GPS is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's in our cars, it's in devices that you use to determine how far you've run or ridden your bicycle. With billions of users and countless devices, it is easy to take GPS for granted. But it is the essential platform for innovations, which enables us to do everyday things like buying gas at the pump and getting directions. And amazing things like tracking ice melts and saving lives in ways that were formerly impossible. The beauty of the GPS system is that it's available for everyone. Uh, the cost of entry for any user is simply the cost of their receiver. Boeing helped make GPS possible. It's been the U.S. Air Force's prime contractor on four major programs, replacing the initial group of satellites as their service lives were completed. Overall, Boeing has produced two-thirds of all GPS satellites, more than 40 in all. Satellites are normally built in a low volume, perhaps two or three at most and they're usually uh, sit in one spot and resources are brought to the satellite. Now, to ensure the GPS is available whenever it's needed, Boeing has changed how satellites are made. It's producing 12 new GPS satellites using a streamlined process based on its efficient and advanced airplane assembly line techniques. Our goal is to have the highest quality. These new satellites bring next generation performance to the GPS constellation we all use every day. As a result, they are delivering new levels of accuracy to what is already a remarkably accurate system, and they are being built in a much more efficient way, ensuring that this essential technology is available when we need it. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 14 minutes, 53 seconds into the flight. The GPS-2F mission 
lifted off from Space Launch Complex 41 here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station at 11.23 p.m. Eastern Time. The mission is nearing the end of the first of two Centaur second stage engine burns. Our next event, Miko 1, is scheduled to take place a couple of minutes from now. Let's go back to Marty Malinowski for the call. Our tank pressures are stable. Storage bottle pressures look good. Plus and better voltages are as well. Body rates controlling down the middle. One minute to Miko. Centaur is flying an altitude of 158 miles, downrange distance 3,423 miles, current velocity 20,142 miles per hour. RL-10 continues to perform well. Pump temperatures are as expected. RCS line temperatures look good. Coming up on Beacon momentarily. And we have Miko. Engine shutdown looks good. FTS receivers have been secured. ORS settling has begun. Fuel tank has been done. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 17 minutes 46 seconds into the flight. Marty Malinowski just confirmed cutoff of the RL 10 engine. The mission has now entered an extended coast phase, which will last about three hours. Following Miko 1, the mission trajectory changes to a southeasterly heading, flying over Eastern Europe, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia. It will continue in a south-southeasterly direction over the Indian Ocean. Following a short second burn of the RL-10 engine, the Centaur's second stage will deliver the GPS-2F7 satellite to semi-synchronous orbit over the Southern Ocean, north of Antarctica. Separation will take place about 3 hours 24 minutes after liftoff. I'd like to thank Marty Malinowski for his support of tonight's broadcast. I'd also like to thank Lieutenant Dan Cuellar. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss the GPS mission. Thank you. For more information about the Atlas V and this mission, please visit our website at ulalaunch.com or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We'll leave you now with another look at the liftoff of the Atlas V rocket carrying the Air Force's 7th GPS-2F satellite. I'm Steve Agat. On behalf of the entire ULA launch team, thank you for joining us, and have a good evening. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the seventh GPS-2F satellite for the United States Air Force. The Global Positioning System provides worldwide positioning, navigation, and timing services for military and civilian users. You're now hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Pressure's good, pump 